Hello and welcome to our first um, Advent midweek service here in 2022. We are going to be through all of these Advent midweek services following the order of evening prayer, which, if you have a hymnal, is on page 243. And as I mentioned, every service, uh, I will also put things online if that's easier for you. Uh, so, without any ado, let's begin. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun. We look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O Giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten your darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation and we your creatures glorify you father son and holy spirit amen My prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly, hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evil doers. But my eyes are turned to you, O God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting 
up of my hand as the evening sacrifice. Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us that, with purified minds, we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever. Amen. Our hymn of the day for today is number 336, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending. Number 336. <laughs> Uh... 
Thou shalt reign and thou alone. A reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. O Lord! Have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Our midweek services this year will focus on a few passages that the Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul to write to the church in Thessalonica. The church in Thessalonica was struggling with some teachings about the coming of Jesus on the last day. Paul wrote a letter to them in order to help them come to the proper understanding concerning the end of time. 1 Thessalonians is a book that has a, a lot in common with what you could think of as like the two-minute warning, you know, at the end of a hockey game or the end of a football game. The Apostle Paul warns the Thessalonians that world history is almost over. The time is short. Now the church has always lived in eager readiness for that day when the Lord will reveal his presence to all people as he executes final judgment on the earth. Paul's first epistle to the Thessalonians is one of those places where the Lord informs us about his coming on the last day. Paul begins by wishing grace and peace to his fellow Christians. Yes, we are to live as though Jesus could return at any moment to judge the living and the dead. Yes, we will all appear before God's judgment throne. But this does not mean that we need to panic. It's not time to freak out. The Holy Spirit inspired Paul to remind the Thessalonians and us that we are in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That means we have the Holy Spirit's gifts of faith hope, and love. The Holy Spirit's gift of faith receives the gifts of God, especially the gift of forgiveness earned by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit's gift of love that comes along with faith reaches out to serve one another. The Holy Spirit's gifts produce hope that looks forward to the day when the Lord returns to raise the dead and give eternal life to all who believe in him. After his greeting, Paul continued to write, You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. The time is short, so we can't waste it on unimportant stuff. We don't know when our Lord will return. We also don't know when the end of our time on this earth will come. The Lord could return right now while I am preaching this sermon. Please do. You could go home tonight, and the Lord could call you home in your sleep. 
So yes, the time is short. And Paul says that the Thessalonians are an example of how to use the time. In other words, they are making the most of every opportunity. And what are they doing? Well, Paul says that the word of the Lord sounded forth from them. This means that they were confessing their faith, not only to each other, but their confession sounded forth from them into the world all around them. And when Paul says that the word of the Lord sounded forth from you, he used the Greek word from which we get the English word echo. And echo simply bounces back the original sound. Our confession echoes God's word. We don't need to create our own confession. God wants us to echo what he has said. And that echo is actually quite simple. The word of God teaches that I, I was conceived and born sinful and under the power of the devil until Christ claimed me as his own. And I would have been lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for my sin. And the Holy Spirit has given me faith so that I trust Jesus for the forgiveness of my sin. Therefore, I have the clear promise of God that I shall not perish, but I already have eternal life. And the promise of eternal life is not just for me, but it is for all people. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Paul, in his letter, noted that part of their confession was that they had turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. This is so critical to me because Thessalonica was only 50 miles from Mount Olympus, the supposed residence of the Greek gods. But when the Holy Spirit opened up the Thessalonians' hearts to the gospel, they realized that all their gods and idols could not offer a real solution to their greatest problem. They discovered that their greatest problem wasn't their harvest and it wasn't their business dealings. Their greatest problem was that they had offended a holy and just God. But Paul told them that Jesus poured out his blood to forgive them. He rose on the third day to embrace them, and he is coming again to restore them. Unfortunately, we have just as many idols today in our culture. It could be a lover, a Lexus, our labor, our leisure time, our music. The Lord may return at any time. We don't have time for competing gods. So Paul admonishes us to follow the example of the Thessalonians and turn away from our idols. He admonishes us to turn to the living God instead and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. People who have survived fires in the wild have a small idea what the coming wrath might be like. Every once in a while you'll hear of somebody who survived a forest fire because they had started a backfire. They saw that smoke on the horizon and realized that the fire was coming faster than even a horse could run. The only choice was to start a small controlled fire that would use up the fuel around them before the big fire came. They stood in an ever widening circle of blackened earth and waited for the fire to come. And the fire would have been terrifying as it drew near but it bypassed the people who stood where the fuel had already been burned. When Christ returns, the judgment of God will be like that fire. It will be powerful and destructive. But if we stand in that burned over place, we will be saved. And where, you ask, is that burned over place? Well, I'm so glad you asked. The burned over place is at the foot of the cross. There, Jesus has already endured the fire of God's wrath. He has used up the fuel of our sin. So it is at the cross we stand for safety. Brothers and sisters, the time is always short, for no one knows when his or her time will be over. The proclamation is what it has always been. Jesus himself proclaimed the gospel of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. My 
my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things to me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In peace let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For Timothy and Marvin, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all people, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For King Charles, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For those who bring offerings, 
for those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Alleluia. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of this first midweek service as we Explore the wonders of the coming Christ. I pray that you are blessed by God and walk in his light all the way through your week. Amen.